Hey, what's going on everyone? Back with another knife overview. Today we are going to be looking at the Microtech Glycon, which of course is named after the Roman snake god. Um, this is the box that it comes with, standard Microtech. Uh, you can see right there the model and all that good stuff. Um, as far as the stats go on this knife, so this is going to be, it's called like the Shadow, so the signature Shadow version. Um, there's a myriad of different, you know, um types of glycons you can get this is the one that i got i'll get into it in a little bit because it was i don't know i was scared for a second but um the details on this knife so it features a 3.75 inch blade it's going to be 8.8 .8 inches overall this one has m390 steel um it features kind of uniquely in what we haven't seen from microtech offerings yet um as far as otfs go we're going to have um, aluminum and titanium kind of mated together with this one. And in the past, in my experience with Microtech OTFs, which I have an extensive history with their out the front knives, um, it, they've always been aluminum bodies. But I think it's really cool that they added titanium to the mix. Um, you know, the materials are definitely premium. Um, this also does have Torx hardware. And, and you'll see here, so we're going to have there's going to be three screws on the clip side and then there's going to be five on the show side so i thought that that was kind of interesting usually manufacturers will try to put all of the hardware or you know as much hardware as they can on the clip side and leave the show side a little bit more naked but that's not the case um you know I'm, I'm sure that it's because of some of the internals here they had to have the you know more screws on the show side um, than the clip side uh, the Glycon, so it, this one, it weighs five ounces. It is going to be made in the U.S. And the MSRP on it, so as shown, the MSRP for this signature shadow is going to be $650. But you can get a plain Jane version that will run you $530. So the difference with this one being that it has nickel boron coated internals, which you can't see because they are all internal. Um, before we get into my observations, I'll do a few quick size comparisons. So... The Glycon as compared to a Strider SMF, looks like that. And then as compared to a McNeese, oh, I haven't opened this one in a little bit. Oh, there we go. McNeese 3.5, looks like that. And then finally, I brought out a Benchmade bug out so with that we'll get in my observations appreciate y'all tuning in all right hop in right into my observations with the the glycon so for everyone's awareness i'm going to be kind of comparing uh this knife to my experience with other microtech out the front knives so um i've had several combat trudons um ultra Techs, scarab halo combat front opener um I've had quite a few of their offerings over the years starting in you know the late 90s all the way to today so um with that um what the first thing that kind of struck me about this knife was that you know traditionally microtech loves to advertise microtech you know whether that's on the blade pocket clip all over the place this one has very subtle branding and i definitely appreciate it um if you flip it over to the the clip side it just says glycon has the data manufacturer and then the serial number which this one is 31 um and then it has presumably Anthony Marfioni's signature on the pocket clip, but nowhere does it say Microtech or anything like that. And that is a huge deviation from what we normally see from Microtech. Um, speaking of the pocket clip, and I'm gonna put this kinda away for a second. Um, I really do love the pocket clip. One of my gripes with the other um, Microtech OTFs that I've tried, they've just been really big, spongy, obtrusive. They would actually have most most times a glass breaker on the top so it would kind of screw into the top and that would hold the clip in but you know this is going to be obviously always tipped down but it will be left or right hand carry and, and i think that that's a really great look um i will say you know this is a beautifully milled titanium clip and it's one of my favorite clips that i've seen come out of microtech um i know i mentioned when i did my msi uh, as well as the stitch review that the the oem pocket clips on those new offerings aren't good at all they're trash clips but they really figured it out with the glycon i couldn't be happier with it 
All right, the next observation that I had, which I can't attest to it, I have to take their word for it, but just the fact that this shadow version that I have has nickel boron coated internals, which, um, you know, I would assume that that is, you know, that has a lower coefficient of friction, so there's not as much friction on the moving parts, so hopefully less service uh, will be needed for this knife, but there's no escaping that it does bump this up to that $650 price point, whereas you could get a plain Jane version for, you know, $550. Um, I will say when I bought this thing, uh, I hadn't seen too many glycons for sale and I didn't do a lot of research, but I got really frustrated when I saw saw and bought this one for, I think I paid $500 for it. And then the next day there was literally a guy with a, you know, two tone, it wasn't the shadow. So not nickel boron coated internals had one listed for like 400 bucks. And I was like, cool. I just overpaid by a hundred bucks, but upon closer inspection and I did not do this on purpose, this is a higher end model because of that nickel boron coated internals, which, um, you know, there's no way you can see the nickel boron coated internals from, you know, carrying this knife. And I kind of equated it to like an AP watch where it's like, you know, they're well known for having, you know, even if they have a closed case back, they have a rose gold balance. And the only person that's ever going to see that is someone who's servicing the watch. So you just got to kind of like, look at an AP or look at this knife and be like, cool, I have, you know, coated, nickel boron coated internals. That's really great. The next observation that I had concerning the Glycon would just be kind of this um, unique mating of aluminum and titanium. And, um, you know, I think it's a really good look. It's even more apparent when you see the, you know, two-tone where, you know, this might be silver or black, vice versa. So you have that contrast, but I think it's a really cool use of titanium and aluminum mated together. And you really don't see that too much. A lot of times it's either, you know, aluminum or titanium, but not both. So re really cool look. Um, I also think that it, is, it was kind of strange that this does have a backspacer. So, you know, similarly to a traditional folding knife, they actually have a titanium backspacer in this knife. And so, you know, the older Microtex, which are closed aluminum construction, um, this one having that kind of titanium bolster backspacer, I really couldn't tell you if it's necessary or not, but that was definitely a unique feature of this knife. Um, have not seen too many OTFs with a, with a backspacer. All right, the next observation that I had was the action. And again, kind of unique to the Glycon and how you know it's a Glycon when you just set eyes on this thing is going to be these three ways to, um, you know, deploy and retract the blade. And um, it was kind of funny. I, I will say, so this tension on here is exactly like a combat Trudon. So if you're wondering if it's harder to fire, if it's easier to fire, the, the tension is right in line with all of my experience with a um, combat Trudon. Um, I will say, so ostensibly when they advertise this, you know, they say, oh, you have three different deployment methods to be able to deploy this blade. Using these little side sliders here is not easy. Um, it definitely is better for um, retracting the knife as opposed to deploying it. If I put my thumb on this, it, it's definitely, you You can do it, um, but you know, you're gonna kind of pay for it. Um, the most comfortable method to deploy this knife is definitely gonna be with, with your thumb and then retracting it, you know, kind of pulling down on these two plungers and, uh, you know, retracting the knife from there. Uh, the next observation that I had about the Microtech Glycon was just going to be the blade shape. Again, I have the bayonet style. Um, I think they did a really great job with their bayonet style and putting this jimping up here forward of the button. Um, one of my, I don't even know if it was a critique really, but using a combat Trudon where, you know, the blade was, there were mirror images on both sides. Um, you always kind of wondered like what your grip, because, you know, it's all aluminum too. So it gets like slippery, whatever you're doing. I kind of like having this extra insurance right here and, and it is very jagged jimping. It's not, you know, nice or chamfered or anything like that, but it is nice to know that if my thumb slips forward or off this button, I'm not immediately going to be greeted by the, you know, the, the pointy end, so to speak. So, um, I really do like that. I think they did a great job. It's a very nice looking blade. Um, you know, you have this like fuller right here, which, you know, I, as I said before, I'm surprised Microtech didn't take advantage of that real estate and put a Microtech logo there. Um, and you also have in this fuller there, there's these little holes, which are 
strictly cosmetic in nature and I, I just have to say i mean they look like they're really well done uh, the dlc evenly coats the inside of these little you know pinholes here but that was just like extra machining they did for the look of it and um you know i, I think it really came out looking great all right, the next observation that I had was based on me, you know, reading about this knife online. And I do try to, so I stay away from looking at other reviews on YouTube, as well as, you know, reading people's reviews online before I review a knife, because it also just becomes, you know, saying the same thing. So I kind of like to take my own shot at things. But, you know, reading the description on people or websites that were selling this, it, they were saying that this has a high fidget factor. And I just respectfully disagree. I don't think OTFs at all have a high fidget factor at all. Like there's never a time when I'm sitting there like this is a loud knife when you deploy it. It's not very subtle. You have this nut, you know, this blade that's flying out of the front. I don't know who fidgets with these things. I think it's, it's not so much fidget factor as cool factor. Like it, it's cool to have a knife that, you know, shoots out the front and then retracts. Um, but I, I wouldn't necessarily call it fidget factor, but that was one of the you know, kind of in the description, they were like, oh, really, really high fidget factor with this knife. I don't agree with that at all. And that concludes my overview of the Microtech Glycon. Um, again, this is going to be the signature shadow version, nickel boron coated internals. Um, I think it's really cool that Microtech is continuing to innovate on dual action OTFs. Um, you know, not like Benchmade. I mean, to be honest with you, it, I get it's kind of cringy to even see Benchmade infidels on the market anymore. They're just so antiquated. But um, I don't know. I was trying to think of like, what is the purpose of an OTF besides the whole like, oh, pulling this out and people being like, whoa, that's an automatic knife, whatever. Um, I did think about this a little bit and what I do like about it is I think in a, in again, whatever, this is just me kind of not blowing smoke, but I, I did try to put some, some thought into it. And I think these are really cool self-defense blades. If they're, you know, if you're legally able to carry one where you live, um, this, the situation that I would think about where you, this would be a good knife to have would just be if you were in like close quarters where, you know, your ability to open up a folder would be limited by someone grabbing your wrist, et cetera, or, you know, trying to break into your car when you're inside. Um, that very specific example, I'm mentioning that because it recently happened to someone who I work with, like, if, you know, buddy was stopped at a stoplight, somebody got out of their car in front of them and tried to open the back door. So, you know, I think in that case, it would be cool to have an OTF where you could pull this out of your pocket. Even if you are grappling with someone, you could still deploy this knife. I think that that's where the sweet spot is with OTFs, but I know all the purists out there are going to say, and, and it's not lost on me, you know, the, the amount of springs, internal hardware, et cetera. The, the, there is just more potential for things to go wrong when you have more moving parts. And certainly an OTF has that, but at the end of the day, some knife is better than no knife. Um, you know, I, I think the, you know, kind of just to end this, um, my basic line is just that, you know, it's really awesome to see that Microtech is continuing to innovate on out the front knives. Um, you know, this is a huge step up and kind of, you know, it, it brings us to 2023 as far as OTF knives go, whereas, you know, me seeing over and over again, combat trudons, etc. They, they all just kind of like look the same and they really haven't changed. But, you know, kudos to Microtech for, you know, pushing the envelope with OTFs. Um, that concludes my overview. I appreciate y'all tuning in. We'll see you next time.